Greetings, my name is Victor Palana, the Bishop for the Diocese of Tlegsdorp in South Africa, and the Liaison Bishop for the Catholic Parliamentary Liaison Office of the Southern African Catholic Bishops' Conference. During the past few months, we've been addressing important and topical issues here in South Africa, in Southern Africa. Among those issues, we looked at the electoral reform. We were addressing issues around um, education, parenting, and um, gender-based violence. But one of the topics we dealt with is xenophobia. And I am also very much interested in this topic because I see um, the use of social media, the rise of social media in promoting uh, xenophobia in South Africa. It is a great concern for me because some of our groups like Dudula, um, Put South Africa First Movement, and others are actually using social media to promote um, xenophobia and the anti-immigrant rhetoric. Their message is South Africans have been marginalized and uh, foreign nationals are preferred and are given special treatment at the expense of South Africa. I listened to some debates, for example, on TikTok by these groups, by these movements, and I was really disturbed. Migrants are accused there of crimes, rapes, causing unemployment, taking jobs from South Africans, kidnapping, heists, occupation of flats and uh, RDP houses, taking spaces in schools, and um, people are being mobilized to turn against immigrants. So there is this anti-immigrant rhetoric and using social media for that. I was also disturbed, I think it was last year, 2022, when a group of these activists went to Galafong Hospital and they started questioning patients, asking them to produce their IDs saying that they were going to prevent um, non-South Africans from accessing health care in that particular hospital. And I, uh, another group went to a particular school in town uh, to check um, if all the um, students are South Africans or not. This is quite disturbing uh, because their mobilization are driven by peer-to-peer -peer interactions in uh, using social media. And here you find um, them bringing a certain narrative, a narrative that encourages or maintains people's anger. You know, they feed off feelings of frustration, maybe disappointment, uh, among marginalized black South Africans and channel these feelings towards a loosely diffused group of African foreigners in particular, but they do include at times Asian um, immigrants and at times um, they do refer to uh, particularly Pakistanis, Chinese and Bangladeshis. Now, I... I'm worried that they have got this freedom to mobilize people um, to follow this anti-immigrant uh, agenda, to reinforce their xenophobic worldview, bringing sometimes false stories or exaggerations. And this um, anti-immigrant rhetoric and stories are disturbing, I think, the relationships that are there already in our communities. I'm trying to understand um, where they are coming from, and uh, I fail to understand how they are given so much freedom 
power and spaces to promote and to mobilize anti-immigrant sentiments. That can be dangerous because these sentiments um, taking advantage is taking advantage of people's frustrations can lead to violence. And in some cases, we have seen some violence, you know, the burning of uh, spaza shops, uh, vendors being attacked. Um, we have seen in some cases um, um, people being um, chased out of houses and floods, people taking the law into their own hands. And this is a concern for the church. And it should be a concern for the church to say, are we going to keep quiet and be passive? Are we going to be indifferent in the face of this? Or are we going to say something? And I would like to propose that maybe as church, we take a stand, a stand against xenophobia, a stand for dialogue, dialogue between maybe the marginalized black South Africans and those who represent these movements, not leaving out foreign nationals in that dialogue. We need to start talking and sharing ideas to see how we can coexist, how we can live peacefully, how we can share these spaces that are there. But at the same time, yes, I do believe that as church, we need to be prophetic and remind people of the word of God. In the book of Deuteronomy, you hear God saying to the children of Israel, take care of the stranger. Deuteronomy says that foreigners must be treated with dignity and humanity. And we need to learn as South Africans that dignifying others enhances one's own dignity as a people, as people of God. Misplaced anger and violence against foreigners will hurt us all, will hurt the image of South Africa, will hurt our communities. In Exodus 22, verse 20, we hear, You shall neither mistreat a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. This text suggests that there is a homeland for all, as well as that all of us are strangers in this world. I wanted to quote earlier on the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, 17 to 19 where the Lord says, For the Lord your God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribes, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing, you shall also love the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. And there are similar texts like that, um, encouraging us as church to take a moral stand to say we need to solve, to come up with a solution and not victimize people, not mobilize people for violence. Where we do need to interact with government, we need to interact with government. Yes, um, because of the influx of illegal immigrants, there is a need, and maybe that is also the position of the church, to show that they are listening also to marginalized blacks, especially those in the townships, in the informal settlement. Perhaps there is need for the, 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 the government to stem the influx of illegal immigrants at the borders. But this will require political will, and more resources to strengthen border control. And there has to be a zero tolerance against corruption at the borders, because many people are bribing um, officials from home affairs. They are bribing police. They are bribing the army. 
um, they are bribing officials in charge of housing so that, um, and people are aware of those. And then we need to fight corruption, especially for those who are responsible for the security of the country and for the integrity of our national borders. Uh, the government also has to uh, address high levels of unemployment. They must be creative, really, um, to try and reduce extreme poverty in South Africa, channeling resources to the poor, uh, embracing the idea of a universal income grant, because inequality in South Africa has to be addressed, uh, because if it is not addressed, uh, it, 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 it creates an environment where crime and violence grows and festers. The, another solution to the issue of xenophobia, there is a need to address high levels of crime in the society. Um, we use foreign nationals as a scapegoat for crime, but Many, many South Africans are involved in crime as well. Many South Africans are involved in drug trafficking. Many South Africans are involved in um, corruption. So we can't take one group and use them as a scapegoat for the problems of our country. Yes, our country must address employment conditions in the society, ensuring that all employers adhere to the issue of the minimum wage and they follow the labor laws of the country, especially when it comes to employing people, they need to look at the labor laws. Uh, and there, I think as we engage, people will come up with solutions to see how we can live together. My worry is many, of those migrants who are legal might also become victims. Those who, are, who have the right and the authority to be in this country might also become victims to these xenophobic attacks. Because when people attack, they forget now to, to ask you, are you legally here or not? They classify everyone as illegal simply because you come from another country. And when I was listening to this uh, TikTok debate, I think it comes on every evening. And there is also something happening on Twitter. It's on Facebook. People are saying, go home. You don't belong here. We don't want you here. South Africans forget that they were once accommodated by Africans when uh, during the time of the struggle, during the time of apartheid. They were accommodated and they lived in foreign lands. Now they, 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 they mistreat people who come here, some of them um, out of um, running away from political um, and religious um, persecution. Where should they go? because we have a, a duty to welcome them and to, to be hospitable. That is Ubuntu, that is the gospel also. Uh, our Ubuntu values say, be kind, be welcoming, be hospitable. And that is the word of Jesus, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And who's the neighbor? A person who comes from another country is my neighbor. We must, on one hand, ask the government to do its job, but we must not mobilize communities to start hunting, um, harassing, intimidating, threatening um, foreign nationals and immigrants. It is not right and it is not ethical. It is not moral. It is not Christian. We have to take a stand as church to say, this is not the way to do it. Instead, we have to engage uh, with these groups that are promoting xenophobia uh, so that they can also have a, ch a change of heart. Uh, we need to engage government. We need to embrace and protect those who are vulnerable. And the most vulnerable in the society are 
um, immigrants and foreign nationals. We need to, to, to protect them and not to harass them. That is my plea. That is my, my, my position. Thank you very much.